Hello and welcome back to Pyro 5610. In my last video, you got to see us test the wish plate. Let's roll some footage from there. Okay, so it held up to quite a few rounds, including the 300 after about five shots. So today, we're not gonna test the other wish plate because, like I said, 35 bucks, two plates. We're not gonna test this one. We're gonna torture it. So, we have quite a few rounds here. I am with Tyler, the friendly neighborhood tree, over here in the truck. So today, we have a couple different rounds. We have the 410 shockwave, which I stole while my fiance was sleeping. Um, we have 556 green tips because Tyler brought his Christmas present with us. And then of course I've got the 30-06 and I have 295 grain 50 cal muzzleloader. So we're gonna test all these and just like in the pots and pans video where I tested if things were bulletproof, we're gonna shoot at the we're gonna shoot at the new plate first. And once one of the rounds makes it through it, I'm gonna see how feasible it is to double stack these plates like so and shoot through them. So we will get to see if there's any penetration. And I have a feeling we're gonna have better results with this one because as we know, in the pots and pans video. Speed equals penetration. So the faster you go, the deeper you go. Let me rephrase that. The faster the bullet's going, the harder it's gonna go in. You know what, it's just sounding worse and worse the more I say it. So let's just get to shooting the video. So we have regular game loads for the 410, which I'm gonna load in first. Yeah, just like that. There we go. And then I have the self-defense round, like this. And of course, I was just talking to someone about this. I don't remember who, but it's a nice day here in Western Pennsylvania. It's a beautiful day, it's like 55 degrees, but of course the wind is blowing! So, that's something I have to deal with. Uh, hopefully the audio doesn't pick it up too bad, but uh, first test, we're gonna try the game load, then we're gonna try the self-defense load if the target stays up. That hit it? That sounded like you hit it. I don't see where. At all. Damn. Here, this was all bubbled up. You can feel the BBs in there. So that's where I hit it the first time. And then the second one, that was three copper plates. One of them definitely hit there. I don't know where the rest of them hit. And then it's followed by a certain, I don't remember how many BBs, but there's some BBs in there, and there's a couple up there. But uh, no, that one survived for sure. So now we'll move on to the 50 cal muzzle loader because I think that one's the next lowest velocity. All right, so once again, I don't know uh, how much you can hear me because of the wind. It's really terrible today, but um, I got the muzzle loader here. It should fire on the first shot if it's as accurate as I think it is. So if you ever caught yourself in the middle of the Civil War and you had a wish plate, we're gonna find out if you'd be safe or not. And we're back with powder in my pen this time. So hopefully with this wind, 50 cals, well, muzzle loaders, I should say, don't really fly super fast, so they're not really known to fly. I don't think I hit it. The one thing is 
smart man told me the first time I ever shot a muzzle loader, he goes, if it misfires, you're probably gonna miss on the second shot because you're not expecting it to go well. And I think that's what happened. So while I was out there again, I was looking at this and it just kind of moves freely. So this hasn't been sighted in and that's a new thing because it wasn't moving during deer season. So I got to tighten that down. I think this has like one shot left in it because it is really dirty. Um, so we're going to try one more shot. I honestly don't know where that second shot went. So we're going to try the third and if it doesn't shoot, I can't really help it because I can't keep firing this without it getting extremely dirty. You clipped it, I think. Okay, we finally found where I was shooting at and it was shooting low. Not super low, but kind of low. And I got two right on the same spot, so this should be the kicker and we should get it this time. Try this again. I think I got it figured out. <laughs> <laughs> so, to our viewers that didn't see, I put this behind it. And you see this little spray? That's from a stray BB. But the concussion from the 50 hit it so hard that it's spraying because there's a lot of compression in there. There's no actual hole. I think a BB just got past us. plate <laughs> there's an obvious dent but it did stop I mean there's a you're gonna have probably some sort of rupture in some organ you might have a bleeding bowel from that but it stopped it I mean that's the first bullet that I saw that took off that much freaking paint off the plate itself and thank you for helping me sight in my muzzle loader today it definitely needed that but my god it stopped it <laughs> now that we've shot the 50 cal six or seven times and it definitely needs a bath we'll move on to oh let's do the 556 five, next so now that we saw what the 50 cal will do to it uh we're gonna move on to the 556 five, because the 30 on six i know is probably just gonna blow right through it once again, remember, these are 3A. They are not rated for any rifle rounds whatsoever. So the fact that it has stopped four shots of the 300 and the muzzle loader, which I know they are a slow, it, the muzzle loader is a slow moving rifle round. They're pretty impressive. You have to say that, even if you don't care anything about it, you have to say that. So Tyler brought his 556. Five, I'm going to let him shoot. Uh, regular round through it first and then we're gonna fire a green tip from a little bit farther away and I don't have much hope for either of these rounds because they are fast they are small but they are fast moving rounds and then I'm gonna shoot the 556 five, probably off camera because fun fact about me I've never actually shot a 556 five, before all right we're good All right, well, the pop bottle obviously didn't fare well, so I think we know what that means. Let's get a little close up here at the pop bottle. Yeah, it's shattered. The plate, oh, oh my. Not only is it covered in pop, but it has a very nice 5.56 five, hole in it. So I think that kind of answers our question for the green tip. I'm going to put both plates together because I still have the old plate while it is structurally damaged. I'm just curious, so if you were to, if you were to have a vest with these in it front and back, would you be better off if you know you're facing rifle rounds to put both plates in the front and then you'd be protected from a 5.56? We'll find out because like we found out in the video that I had these wonderful pans in, just a simple pan an extra layer of protection can stop a bullet. So we're gonna find out with the double plates and see if uh, 
Oh, I don't have much hope. For the 5.56 for the green tip that I will be firing in this next clip, um, I just want to give you a point of reference. They are steel core armor piercing ammo. So you remember the rotor video from the bulletproof uh, number two video where we were just shooting a rotor. We have this same rotor out here and as you can see, that's from a 5.56 green tip. That's from a 5.56 green tip. And if you look right, let's see how I can get this. If you look right here, where is it? Right there. That's a hole from a green tip. Oh, there we go. A hole from a green tip right through it. I mean, it just went, I, I can't believe the damage it did. And then there was one more right here where it hit. We were just shooting this uh, earlier and wanted to see if it would penetrate a rotor and it did. So now that is the thinner part of the metal, but you can see what it did to the rest of it. So if that AR armor holds up to a five, five six green tip, I will be impressed. So what we have loaded up in here, so you can see, we have a regular full metal jacket and a green tip underneath it. I have both plates stacked up back to back up there. Uh, the old one, like I said, is, is it is structurally damaged, but we'll see if it can hold up to the round. We're rolling. Yep. All right, now the green tip. Fun fact, Tyler and I came up here and switched out the plates, but I'm going to run this one for you. I know for a fact. Okay, so, um, I was a little late getting to my own range today. Tyler came in first. So, this is his shot, the first one. My shots were right here. Wow, that was really good placement, Ryan. This is the first one, the full metal jacket, and then this was the green tip. So, when we line it up with this... Obviously this hole doesn't count. So on the right will be the full metal jacket, on the left will be the green tip. Oh, ouch! So this is the green tip, but the full metal jacket is right here. And I can confirm that we did shoot that through the other plate. So if you're, they're not, if the enemy is not using green tip bullets, you would be safe with the double plate because once again, it dented it pretty good. There's a nice dent there, not nearly as much as a 50, but there's a nice dent there. However, with the green tip, yeah, it just, it decimated that. I mean, it's same size hole and it's tumbling too. So I don't know where, where it would have hit through here, but it would have went straight through. So I don't have much hope for the odd six, but we're gonna back up the truck a little bit and uh, take a shot at the with the 556 or with the 30 on six and we'll see how it does. All right, so this should only take one shot because like I said in one of my previous videos, one of the new the new video of the year, I only shot two rounds since my hiatus during December. And it was two of these, the reloaded 30 on six shells. My dad and I reload them. Um, and I took out two deer with two shots, so. This should only take one shot. And I have a feeling that pop bottles, or the uh, plates are not gonna hold up to it. So let's see how she does. So, um, remember, oh, this, I put them backwards this time. Oh, okay. So that was the full metal jacket. That was the green tip. This was the first 30 odd six shell. Jeez. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is the second 30 odd six shell. It uh, folded the plate, it cracked it, and it did not slow down whatsoever. Yeah, that actually, that's like a 45 cal hole because I can fit my whole finger in there. And it looks like it hit the back plate. Yeah, it didn't stop or even slow. I mean, it's just, I mean, this is all decimated. This is all like ripped up back here, but it wasn't stopping. So, in conclusion, these, I'm not upset with these, this purchase. I can tell you that. 
35 bucks I paid for both of these. Not one, I didn't pay 35 for this and 35 for this. I bought these 35 bucks and they, uh, they stopped quite a bit. And like I said, we weren't testing them today, we were punishing them, so for what it's worth, you could get yourself some bulletproof armor. Even if you got two thirty-five, I mean that's what seventy dollars off the top of my head. Seventy dollars for two sets of these. You could put two in the front, two in the back, and you're not going to be any thicker, and you'd probably be lighter than wearing that level four armor that I have, which would stop up to. I mean, the level four will stop higher, but if you don't, if you just want something just for fun, or you know, you're not. If you're just worried about handgun rounds, I would recommend these to anyone because that stopped everything we put it through up until the green tip and the 30 out 6. And I didn't space these either, so they were flat up against each other. If you'd like to see more videos, let me know. I'm working on getting more stuff from Wish. Um, they have level 4 plates, which I'd love, love to test out. They have bulletproof shields. They've got even stab proof vests. I will try that with a blowgun and see if it will stop the blowgun. But if you'd like to see more stuff from Wish, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you'd like to see. As always, thanks for watching. I've been Pyro. Have yourself a wonderful day.